Thomas Jefferson once said, when discussing the young country he had helped to create, the qualifications for self-government in society are not innate. They are the result of habit and training. This talk will be looking at our modern society today and will reflect on the question, do we have and do we exhibit the qualities to sustain self-government? Now, we'll get to Jefferson later, but for now, let's talk a little bit about our America. How many times have you read an online post, often of a political nature, and felt the urge to comment with something snarky, harsh, even mean-spirited? If that doesn't apply, how many times have you read people that you do know attack each other, again, not always, but often online? How many relationships between members of a family, friends, members of a shared community, are strained, damaged, and sometimes incompletely, all because of a disagreement that got so heated as to the point of rupturing the relationship. I have found these outcomes all too regular in our world today, and it has bothered me. This talk will be arguing for a new kind of personal politics, that we should all take a step back and think about how we disagree with one another. Because as sure as the sun will rise in the east, there will be disagreements. I am making the case for a renewed civic virtue in the way we all act out our values, especially when we find ourselves opposing what someone is saying. Let, let's start there with a value, one I expect we all share, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Show kindness towards others. The belief in compassion and the belief in the dignity of all humans. Political beliefs stem from values as well. As a history teacher, one of my primary responsibilities is to help kids understand that very fact. It is imperative all of us think long and hard about the candidates and the policies we vote for. It is our job to think about the causes that move us, and it is our job to make the world a better place. It is true that the political causes we believe in and stand up for are based in our personal morals and values. It's also important for all of us to think long and hard about how our personal principles can be translated into public policy, but that doesn't mean we should forget the value we place on all our fellow humans. The dignity of a fellow human should not be diminished in any way just because you find yourself disagreeing with someone. Politics and public policy are very important, but personal relationships matter more. Let me give you a few concrete examples from my own life. Back when I was in middle and high school, one of my best friends was named Ismael. His mom taught me wonderful things about family, human decency, and sacrifice. She sustained me many times with wonderful Mexican food, though she spoke very little to no English. She modeled altruism on a daily basis, and guess what? I didn't know her politics back then, nor do I know them now. It really doesn't matter. Can you imagine if I was only willing to learn from her if we agreed on every single thing? How much would I personally have lost if I judged her for not speaking English as fluently as I do or agreeing with me on every certain political issue? How much community and family would I have been turning my back on? It's also true that I've been blessed to have many wonderful teachers. One of my favorite ones was Mr. O'Hagan. Uh, Mr. O'Hagan, back when I had him in middle school, uh, grew in me a love for our country's history. This man instilled in me a deep appreciation for the Civil War era and all that was at stake during that period in our nation's past. He started me on the path that finds me hanging with high schoolers, talking about history. Really a very lucky man. I will always be grateful to this man and nothing will change that. I didn't care about his personal political leanings, or the political party he belonged to. He showed me his character. He inspired me in many ways, and I am blessed to have had the opportunity to be his pupil. I have found myself sometimes even disagreeing on political issues with some in my own family. Some of those people with whom I disagree have taught me some of life's most important lessons. I'll tell you one thing for sure, a strong work ethic does not only exist in one of our political tribes. 
Some of the people who have poured into me, some of the people who have taught me what real hard work is, we don't always agree. I would be doing myself a disservice if I criticized those individuals, if I hardened my heart to their honest conclusions, and I would be making my world a smaller and colder place. One other thing I've spent a good amount of time thinking about in the past few years or more, you know those people, as we all do, who attack others online because of a disagreement? Do those people really believe in the causes they espouse? Does attacking an individual and potentially severing a relationship aid the cause they believe in? A, a quick hypothetical here. Let's say you deeply believe in charter schools and the charter school movement, and someone online is attacking charter schools as a waste of money and pointless. Would attacking that person and lobbing rhetorical grenades at them change their mind about charter schools? Would attacking them personally, especially in a public forum, bring honor and support to the charter school movement? Or would it push that particular person further from supporting charter schools? Would that person go on to become an even bigger anti-charter school activist? Would you be doing the very cause you believe in a disservice? This is not meant to sound as a judgment of those who do engage in social media politics because Political discussions should not be avoided, but it seems to me that by attacking someone so sharply, you are harming the causes you believe in, and you are also harming the unknown fruits that personal relationships could potentially bear. The main idea here is not to shrink from the robust expectations of civic life. You do need to vote. You do need to advocate for the causes you believe in. Many of you will likely be called to serve your community or our country based on the causes that excite your passion. I strongly urge you to listen to those calls when you hear them. The point is that you can do all of those things while maintaining relationships with those with whom you disagree. How we talk to people matters. How we engage in political dialogue matters. How we treat people matters. Personal relationships matter. From my vantage point, the best thing you can do for yourself and for the causes you believe in is to treat others with respect. It might call for an act of radical kindness on your part when you disagree deeply with what someone is saying. Think for an extra second before lashing out online or in person. If someone is already heated, maybe you can help lower the temperature. While engaging in political discussions, we can and we should also think about how to best preserve and protect our personal relationships. We might even transform our country if enough of us are willing to engage in that kind of radical kindness and thoughtfulness. So back to Jefferson, an impressive yet also very flawed man. If habit and training have contributed to us creating a more polarized society, well then we can, through habit and training, learn anew. I would argue that we in America today do have the qualifications for self-government. However, all too many of us care more about winning an argument. Let's all remember that self-government is rare in this world, and we all need to learn that in order to keep this democracy we love, it requires all of us to work for it. So a challenge, uh, as cliched as that is for a TED Talk, um, practice radical kindness. Remember our shared humanity and remember that it is an honor to live in a free country where we can disagree. We all have a role to play in our country and our communities. And though this work isn't easy and we will fall short sometimes, this is the work of a life honestly and intentionally lived. Radical kindness might just be part of the solution to overcome the extreme divisions in our culture today. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the transcendentalist poet, author, thinker, citizen, no stranger to deeply held beliefs. You cannot do kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. We all have work to do. Thank you very much.